Section 9 of American Big Game Hunting, a collection of stories by the Boone and Crockett Club. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Joseph Tabler. American Big Game Hunting, Section 9. Coursing the Prong Buck by theodore roosevelt the prongbuck is the most characteristic and distinctive of american game animals zoologically speaking its position is unique it is the only hollow horned ruminant which sheds its horns we speak of it as an antelope and it does of course represent on our prairies the antelopes of the old world and is a distant relative of theirs but it stands apart from all other horned animals. Its position in the natural world is almost as lonely as that of the giraffe. The chase of the prongbuck has always been to me very attractive, but especially so when carried on by coursing it with greyhounds. Any man who has lived much in the cow country and has wandered about a good deal over the great plains is of course familiar with this gallant little beast and has probably had to rely upon it very frequently for a supply of fresh meat on my ranch it has always been the animal which yielded us most of the fresh meat we had in the spring and summer of course at such times we killed only bucks and even these only when we positively needed the flesh in all its ways and habits the prong buck differs as much from deer and elk as from goat and sheep now that the buffalo has gone it is the only game really at home on the wide plains. It is a striking-looking little creature, with its big bulging eyes, single-pronged horns, and the sharply contrasted coloration of its coat. This coat, by the way, being composed of curiously coarse and brittle hair. In marked contrast to deer, antelope never seek to elude observation. All they care for is to be able to see themselves as they have good noses and wonderful eyes and as they live by preference where there is little or no cover shots at them are usually obtained only at far longer range than is the case with other game and yet as they are easily seen and often stand looking at the hunter just barely within very long rifle range they are always tempting their pursuer to the expenditure of cartridges more shots are wasted at antelope than at any other game they would be even harder to secure were it not that they are subject to fits of panic folly or excessive curiosity which occasionally put them fairly at the mercy of the rifle-bearing hunter prongbucks are very fast runners indeed even faster than deer they vary greatly in speed however precisely as is the case with deer in fact i think that the average hunter makes altogether too little account of this individual variation among different animals of the same kind under the same conditions different deer and antelope vary in speed and wariness exactly as bears and cougars vary in cunning and ferocity when in perfect condition a full-grown buck antelope from its strength and size is faster and more enduring than an old doe but a fat buck before the rut has begun will often be pulled down by a couple of good greyhounds much more speedily than a flying yearling or two-year-old doe under favorable circumstances when the antelope was jumped nearby i have seen one overhauled and seized by a single first-class greyhound and on the other hand i have more than once seen a pronghorn run away from a whole pack of just as good dogs with a fair start and on good ground a thoroughbred horse even though handicapped by the weight of a rider will run down an antelope but this is a feat which should rarely be attempted because such a race even when carried to a successful issue is productive of the utmost distress to the steed ordinary horses will sometimes run down an antelope which is slower than the average i had on my ranch an undersized old indian pony named white eye which when it was fairly roused showed a remarkable turn of speed and had great endurance one morning on the roundup when for some reason we did not work the cattle i actually ran down an antelope in fair chase on this old pony 
it was a nursing doe and i came over the crest of a hill between forty and fifty yards away from it as it wheeled to start back the old cayuse pricked up his ears with great interest and the minute i gave him a sign was after it like a shot whether being a cow pony he started to run it just as if it were a calf or a yearling trying to break out of the herd or whether he was overcome by dim reminiscences of buffalo hunting in his indian youth i know not at any rate after the doe he went and in a minute or two i found i was drawing up to it i had a revolver but of course did not wish to kill her and so got my rope ready to try to take her alive she ran frantically but the old pony bending level to the ground kept up his racing lope and closed right in beside her as i came up she fairly bleated an expert with the rope would have captured her with the utmost ease but i missed sending the coil across her shoulders she again gave an agonized bleat or bark and wheeled around like a shot the cow pony stopped almost but not quite as fast and she got a slight start and it was some little time before i overhauled her again when i did i repeated the performance and this time when she wheeled she succeeded in getting on some ground where i could not follow and i was thrown out i have done a good deal of coursing with greyhounds at one time or another but always with scratch packs the average frontiersman seems to have an inveterate and rooted objection to a dog with pure blood if he gets a greyhound his first thought is to cross it with something else whether a bull mastiff or a setter or a foxhound there are a few men who keep leashes of greyhounds of pure blood bred and trained to antelope coursing and who do their coursing scientifically carrying the dogs out to the hunting grounds in wagons and exercising every care in the sport but these men are rare the average man who dwells where antelope are sufficiently abundant to make coursing a success simply follows the old pursuit at odd moments with whatever long-legged dogs he and his neighbors happen to have and his methods of coursing are apt to be as rough as his outfit my own coursing has been precisely of this character at different times i have had on my ranch one or two high-class greyhounds and scotch deerhounds with which we have coursed deer and antelope as well as jack-rabbits foxes and coyotes and we have usually had with them one or two ordinary hounds and various half-bred dogs i must add however that some of the latter were very good i can recall in particular one fawn-coloured beast a cross between a greyhound and a foxhound which ran nearly as fast as the former though it occasionally yelped in shrill tones it could also trail well and was thoroughly game on one occasion it ran down and killed a coyote single-handed on going out with these dogs i rarely chose a day when i was actually in need of fresh meat if this was the case i usually went alone with the rifle but if one or two other men were at the ranch and we wanted a morning's fun we would often summon the dogs mount our horses and go trooping out to the antelope ground as there was a good deer country between the ranch bottom and the plains where we found the prong buck it not infrequently happened that we had a chase after black tail or white tail on the way moreover when we got out to the ground before sighting antelope it frequently happened that the dogs would jump a jackrabbit or a fox and away the whole set would go after it streaking through the short grass sometimes catching their prey in a few hundred yards and sometimes having to run a mile or so in consequence by the time we reached the regular hunting ground the dogs were apt to have lost a good deal of their freshness we would get them in behind the horses and creep cautiously along trying to find some solitary prongbuck in a suitable place where we could bring up the dogs from behind a hillock and give them a fair start after it usually we failed to get the dogs near enough for a good start and in most cases their chases after unwounded prongbuck resulted in the quarry running clean away from them thus the odds were greatly against them but on the other hand we helped them wherever possible with the rifle we often rode well scattered out and if one of us put up an antelope or had a chance at one when driven by the dogs he would always fire and the pack were saved from the ill effects of total discouragement by so often getting these wounded beasts it was astonishing to see how fast an antelope with a broken leg could run if such a beast had a good start and especially if the dogs were tired it would often lead them a hard chase and the dogs would be utterly exhausted after it had been killed 
so that we would have to let them lie where they were for a long time before trying to lead them down to some stream bed if possible we carried water for them in canteens there were red-letter days however in which our dogs fairly ran down and killed antelope days when the weather was cool and when it happened that we got our dogs out to the ground without their being tired by previous runs and found our quarry soon and in favorable places for slipping the hounds i remember one such chase in particular we had at the time a mixed pack in which there was only one dog of my own the others being contributed from various sources it included two greyhounds a rough-coated deerhound a foxhound and the fawn-colored crossbred mentioned above we rode out in the early morning the dogs trotting behind us and coming to a low tract of rolling hills just at the edge of the great prairie we separated and rode over the crest of the nearest ridge just as we topped it a fine buck leaped up from a hollow a hundred yards off and turned to look at us for a moment all the dogs were instantly spinning toward him down the grassy slope he apparently saw those at the right and turning raced away from us in a diagonal line so that the left-hand greyhound which ran cunningly and tried to cut him off was very soon almost alongside he saw her however she was a very fast bitch just in time and wheeling altered his course to the right as he reached the edge of the prairie this alteration nearly brought him in contact with the crossbred which had obtained a rather poor start on the extreme right of the line around went the buck again evidently panic-struck and puzzled to the last degree and started straight off across the prairie the dogs literally at his heels and we urging our horses with whip and spur but a couple of hundred yards behind for half a mile the pace was tremendous when one of the greyhounds made a spring at his ear but failing to make good his hold was thrown off however it halted the buck for a moment and made him turn quarter round and in a second the deerhound had seized him by the flank and thrown him and all the dogs piled on top never allowing him to rise later in the day we again put up a buck not far off at first it went slowly and the dogs hauled up on it but when they got pretty close it seemed to see them and letting itself out went clean away from them almost without effort once or twice we came upon bands of antelope and the hounds would immediately take after them i was always rather sorry for this however because the frightened animals as is generally the case when beasts are in a herd seemed to impede one another and the chase usually ended by the dogs seizing a doe for it was of course impossible to direct them to any particular beast it will be seen that with us coursing was a homely sport nevertheless we had very good fun and i shall always have enjoyable memories of the rapid gallops across the prairie on the trail of a flying prongbuck end of section nine